Good morning. Welcome to Four Gables Farms first tutorial on turning a vintage refrigerator into a kegerator. All right, some conversation piece. This is an awesome, uh, you know, party in a box. This is something that uh, is also a green solution to drinking. It's zero waste. Um, all your cups and glasses you can reuse. You're going to get a keg filled. You're not throwing boxes of beer cans in the trash. So it's another way of looking at uh, maybe convincing your wife to let you uh, make a kegerator around the house. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what this is. This is a 1950s Kelvinator. Um, this was my grandfather's, something that sitting in my dad's shop for a long time. It was rusted, gasket was bad, um, it ran all the time. So, it's been sitting for the past 10 years and it made it through the 2016 flood uh, with water up to here. And this thing's bulletproof. The compressor still works. Um, everything is, is somewhat in working order as far as the cooling system goes. So uh, if you do have one around, uh, or if you can find one, just plug it in and make sure it cools. Make sure the compressor kicks on, and this up here starts getting cold. It should get cold within the first few minutes. Uh, if that is good, we can work with everything else. So I'm gonna take us through uh, this video and show a little bit of, of, of what I did while I, of what I was rebuilding it. But I'll also kind of talk us through it here uh, since it's done now. If you do have a modern refrigerator, you can still watch this video and get something out of it. Some of the steps in here won't be for you. Modern refrigerator, you can pretty much just drill a couple holes in the door and roll along after you hook up with your, uh, your kegerator. That minus your thermostat. So, rust removal. As you see in the video, mine was pretty rusted when I started. Right now, I took uh, 80 grit, uh, 120 and 320 and sanded this thing down and got all the, uh, the, the dry rust and the topical rust off of there. I do recommend doing this with the 3M respirator. You don't know what kind of paint was used on these in the 50s. If it was lead-based paint, you don't want to be breathing it. Door insulation. Whenever you remove this panel, a lot of these old refrigerators, that insulation has sagged and settled and it's no longer providing any R value. So what I did, I removed all of the insulation, which allowed me to get in the inside of it and rebuild the inside. As you see in the pictures, the bottom of this door was very rusted. You could put your finger through it. Um, so I ended up getting all the insulation out, sanding it the, the heavy rust down, and coming back with Permatex's rust treatment. This is a rust inhibitor. I sprayed it all on the inside. Um, I also sprayed it on the outside of the whole uh, unit. If the bottom of your door is in bad condition like mine was, you're gonna have to add some structural uh, meat to it. This is just some angle iron you can get from Home Depot. I cut some pieces of it and put it on the inside and riveted it to uh, what, what good metal I had left and installed it at the bottom. The exterior of the, the door was in bad shape. So I also bought this from Home Depot, so or 1 20th of an inch thickness angle iron. All I did was install, was set it up there, drill holes in it, and rivet it to the outside of the door. Here I had to make some bends, which is a little bit more complicated, but uh, if, you, if you cut it with a bandsaw, you can bend this stuff relatively easy and rivet it in place. The outside, I could have uh, I, I could have applied Bondo, which is a body repair filler, um, and really made it smooth and painted it like a car. I wanted it to have some character though. I wanted it to have some age. So what I did was after sanding it down, I, I put my patina on there with the uh, the rust inhibitor. It gave that good look to it that I wanted out of it, and applied a clear coat, and that was it. If you want to go and make, do the extra steps, it's just going to require more time and effort um, and money. You can go to your local supply house and get some car paint and shoot it with a gun. Uh, I didn't choose that option just because I'm a little bit lazy and uh, I also wanted the character. So, on these old vintage refrigerators, you have about a four inch gap between the panel and the outside of the door. So, you have to do something to bridge that gap. I took a pie pan and installed it. Basically, I have a, a, a video showing 
where I drill the holes through here. Basically drill two more holes to where the pie pan has the same uh, mount up and then cut the door panel. Um, by cutting the door panel, now I slide the uh, pie pan inside of this opening and I keep the insulation from getting inside of my refrigerator. Otherwise, you can't seal this thing off. So the pie pan, we'll measure this with a dial count for that measurement. We'll transcribe it onto here and punch holes into it just like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I've already got my holes pre-measured or my spots pre-measured to drill. Here's the hole saw kit I got. It's made by Klein. I got it off of Amazon a while back and it's made for punching holes in steel. So the center point of these two, I've already pre-measured. I'm going to transcribe it into this pot pan. This is going to go like such. I'm going to have to ram it just a little bit. And, uh, and we'll go ahead and slide the taps in. something insulating between this panel and my pie pan. Uh, that took a little while. It was, it was a little bit uh, difficult, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that the video will show you uh, how to do it. Here I'm excited. I finally got the hole cut and it's, uh, it's all lined up. So the next photo is going to show some spray foam that I put behind that uh, opening to allow uh, insulation behind that pie pan that I'm explain here in just a second. All right, so I uh, put the insulation in last night and uh, when I went to bed it over expanded and pushed the pan out a pretty good bit. So I'm having to come back and slightly shave until it gets this the right uh, depth. So when I put the panel, the pan will fit snug against the insulation and against the door. Once I finally got the uh, foam shaved just right to where it pressed against the back of the pan and against the door panel um, I was ready to move on to putting my gasket in once I got all that set up I installed my gasket Half inch thick gasket for a vintage refrigerator. Here's a gasket that I found online about 80 or 90 dollars It's called e-channel vintage refrigerator gasket
Once I have my gasket installed, I went ahead and put my bat insulation in. I have a video showing that as well. Bat insulation goes in. Now I can go ahead and put my door panel on. It fits under that gasket. Put my pod pan in and tighten my taps down. At this point, your door is pretty much done, which is for a vintage refrigerator, this was the hardest part was setting this door up. Once your insulation is done inside, your panel's on, and your gasket's good and tight, you're good to go to move on. All right, so I'm about to start putting in insulation. As you see, uh, I put in some foam in a couple areas that are gonna be hard to insulate. So right now I'm about to cut some bats, measure my table. the fit all right one thing I missed if this surface right here has a lot of corrosion and deep pitting you're gonna want to take some Bondo and fill it and sand it down these are straightforward instructions on here you don't have to mix much you smooth it on there and it hardens within a few minutes you come back and sand it off to get a smooth surface if you don't have a smooth surface that gasket's not gonna hold the cool air in for the vintage fridges most all of them have an adjustable latch. If you put a new gasket on there, you're gonna to have to more than likely adjust this latch so you have a solid seal. If you don't have a solid seal, it's gonna leak uh, cold air and it's gonna run constantly. So you wanna make sure that whenever you close it, you have a solid fit and the, uh, the gasket's completely compressed. You can take a credit card or something thin and slide it all the way around the back side of that gasket and make sure it's the same tension all the way around. If you can take that credit card and slide it in your refrigerator, you don't have a good seal. So you're probably wondering, how does this thing regulate my temperature just right? Well, Inkbird makes these thermostats. All you do is pull the back panel off the refrigerator and put a sensing line in to the back side. You set your parameters, your set points, which mine is set for 33 degrees. It cools it down to 33 degrees. Once it hits 33, it shuts off. It warms back up slow to 36. It kicks the compressor back on again and starts cooling. Basically, you plug your refrigerator into this thermostat. I'll post a link down below and shows you it's about 30 something dollars. It's relatively cheap. Uh, you can set different things on it to where if it gets too hot, it'll alarm. You can do if the compressor or the refrigerator stops working, it will alarm. You slide that into a cup of water or a liquid inside of the, the calculator so it gets a, a good um, understanding of what the, the temperature is as opposed to just being in uh, the, the thermostat just being dangling in the air. So it's in an actual cup of water on the inside. All right, so this setup is a dual tap setup from Kegco. It came with a CO2 bottle, empty, uh, costs about $12 to fill at any um, uh, fire extinguisher repair places. The tops of the taps that go into the kegs, um, basically the whole setup to make beer come out of kegs comes with a two tap kit. Um, all I did was set my, uh, my kegs in here, hook my taps on and tie it into the regulator that comes with the kit. Um, run your hoses out to your taps here and tighten it down. It's pretty straightforward. Here I've got the thermostat sensing line coming to a cup of water, just sitting on the back of the uh, on top of the keg. Eventually, I'm gonna probably fasten something to the wall, but for now, this works perfectly fine. All right, the last step is to go ahead and check this thing out. Make sure it works. Your first couple pours. We're probably going to have a lot of foam like that. And there's a decent pour. Uh, some people say to increase the length of your beer line, the clear lines, to about 15 feet. Um, that's going to help decrease 
the amount of head uh, that you get on your pours. But this, I'm okay with. Thanks for tuning in. Next time we'll have a video on building a chicken coop out of some uh, repurposed lumber. Thanks.